So this is a new micro ATX case from Cooler Master. This is the Q300L V2. It's a very straightforward case where you can build an insanely powerful PC without too much hassle. Now, I wouldn't consider this a small PC, but it's definitely much smaller than a typical tower with little to no compromises on component compatibility. So that's what we're gonna build today. Later on, we'll talk about this video sponsor Squarespace, but for now, Let's get started. All right, so let's take a look at the parts. And the CPU I'll be using is the Intel i5-13600K. This CPU has 14 cores, six of which are performance cores, and can boost up to 5.1 gigahertz. This has been around for a bit now and has some flexibility with the ability to use DDR4 or DDR5 RAM. So you could save some money there if you paired it with a DDR4 motherboard. This being a high-end rig, you could also take a look at the 7800X3D, which is largely considered the best gaming CPU that you can buy at the moment. And I have several videos on the channel using that CPU if you're interested in that. Still, you're not likely to bottleneck even a 4090 with the CPU in games, especially at higher resolutions like 1440p and 4K where I suspect most people with a build like this would be playing. As far as upgradability, it's looking like the next generation of Intel chips may be using the same 1700 socket, so there should be an upgrade path to at least the 14th gen. We'll know for sure soon, but if you do go with AMD's 7800X3D, that AM5 platform is supposed to be supported up until 2025. As for the motherboard, I'm gonna be going with the ASUS TUF B760M. With a B-series motherboard, it's more mid-range and not gonna be as pricey as a Z-series board. This also won't allow for overclocking. Now, how important that is will be completely up to you. For me, I've always been happy with the performance of the 13600K at stock, and I don't really think this CPU is worth overclocking, but again, that's up to you. This particular model has both DDR4 and DDR5 versions, so you'll wanna make sure that you pick up the right one for you. But the one I'm gonna be using today is DDR5. This has everything you would need from a typical gaming PC build. You got three case fan headers, a front panel USB-C connector, two M.2 slots, both with PCI Express 4.0, even a Thunderbolt USB 4 header on the bottom, which is pretty awesome to see. It also has plenty of USB ports, Wi-Fi 6, and USB-C on the back. I think it's a pretty good looking board as well. Now let's lower the CPU into the socket with the gold triangle facing the same direction as the triangle on the socket. Then we can close the latch. Next up, we have the storage. For the most part, I like to keep it simple and use a single M.2 drive. The one I've got here today is a Samsung 980 Pro. Now I think most people are gonna be fine with one or two terabytes. I have two terabytes here, but you also have the option to add an additional drive in that second slot if you ever need to in the future. You do have some options when it comes to CPU cooling in the Q300L V2. You've got room for a 240 millimeter radiator at the front if you wanna go the water cooling route, but today I'm going air cooled. So I'll be using the Scythe Fuma 3. This is a fantastic CPU cooler. It's very quiet and performs as well, if not better than coolers that are more expensive than it and you can pick this one up today for only $50. Let's grab the Intel backplate from the box and align it through the four holes on the back of the motherboard. Then we can slide the plastic spacers with the rubber side pointing down. Let's grab and install our two LGA 1700 mounting plates and then secure them with the bolt nuts. Let's leave this here for now and install the actual cooler later on in the build. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm going with DDR5 memory in this build. Again, if you wanna save some money, you could get the DDR4 version of the motherboard and DDR4 memory, but honestly, DDR5 has gone way down in price, so given the option, I personally would go with DDR5. I've got 32 gigs of Corsair Dominator 5600 megahertz memory, and these also have an Intel XMP profile, so we shouldn't have any issues with timings or anything like that. So let's open the latch, make sure that the notch is correctly aligned, and then apply even pressure until you hear both sides click into place. As I mentioned earlier, you could install a 240 millimeter radiator at the front of the case, but because I'm going air-cooled, I'm going to use that space for a pair of 140 millimeter fans from Noctua. I'll be setting the fans as intake here at the front and then provide a couple of 120 millimeter exhaust fans at the rear and the top. But before we continue, I want to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. Building a new website can take a lot of time and effort, but with Squarespace's flexible templates, creating a new website is very simple. You can select from hundreds of available templates and customize it as much as you need to fit your style. Squarespace also allows you to add an online store. 
giving you the ability to track orders and website traffic in the analytics section. You can also create email campaigns, such as newsletters, to send out to all of your subscribers. Even if you're simply looking just to create an online portfolio, Squarespace is the ideal platform to do it. When you're ready to build a new site, head over to squarespace.com slash Devin Johnston to start your free trial today. Squarespace is also offering my subscribers 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Just enter the code Devin Johnston at checkout to save. Okay, now that we've got the rear and front fans installed, we can lower the motherboard into the case, aligning it with the standoffs, then secure it. Now, the first thing I would recommend doing here is feeding your CPU power cable from your power supply and the fan splitter from the CPU cooler through the back of the case and make those connections. The top of the case is not removable, so it's actually pretty difficult to make those connections even without the cooler installed and it's nearly impossible if it was. With all those top connections plugged in, I'm gonna install the last top exhaust fan. Next, we can start plugging in our power cables and case cables. I should mention that I'm gonna be using the Corsair RM1000X power supply in this build. This is a pretty large power supply, but it still fits into the case very comfortably with no problems. This build will be using a 4090, which is recommended to be paired with a 850 watt power supply or above. So this will absolutely leave us with plenty of headroom. I bought this unit a few years ago, so it also did not include a 12 volt high power cable. So I did purchase one of those as well separately for like $20. Now I'm not 100% sure if they include one now, but if you're buying a new power supply, you'll wanna make sure that it does include one so that you don't have to use the awful adapter that comes with the NVIDIA cards. Assuming of course that you're using an NVIDIA card that requires it. Okay, so let's route the giant 24 pin motherboard cable into the back and then plug that in, along with the USB-C and USB-3 on the left-hand side. Then across the bottom, we can plug in the front panel connector, which is very conveniently combined into a single connection so that you don't have to deal with all those little individual wires. I wish more cases did this. Then the HD audio connection on the bottom right. I'm also gonna be using a Noctua FH1 fan hub. So I'm gonna plug in the extension cable for that now at the bottom here and then route it to the back. The case has a removable power supply bracket, which can be removed with the two screws on the back. Then we can align it to the power supply and secure it onto the unit. With all of that squared away, we can grab the power supply and plug the other ends of those cables into the unit. So that's the motherboard and CPU cables, the two eight pin connectors for the 12 volt high power cable and a single SATA power cable for the fan hub. There should be plenty of room to lower the power supply with the bracket attached back into the case and resecure it. So there's tons of space on the back for cable management along with some tie up points. So I'm going to plug the fan cables into the hub and then tie down some of these loose cables. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's not like you're gonna have to see it much anyway. All right, I think we're ready to install the cooler now. And so let's apply some thermal paste to our CPU. For these Intel chips, I like to put a line right down the center. Then Scythe actually includes a thermal paste spreader in the box. So let's try to spread this over the CPU as evenly as possible. Now we can lower the cooler into the case and align it with the two standoffs on the mounting brackets. Then when you tighten these screws, you'll want to switch off every few rotations to get an even pressure across the CPU. Now we can install the two fans to the cooler by clipping the first one in the center by pulling the fan clip into the groove of the fins. And then the same thing for the slim fan on the outside. Now, right now I have them set to push the air towards the back of the case and we'll need to plug the fans into the splitter by connecting the slim fan into the white connector and the other into the black. You can fit a CPU cooler up to 159 millimeters in the height and the Fuma 3 is actually 154. So it will utilize the space and fit pretty comfortably here. This combined with those Noctua fans is gonna give some good airflow while also not being too loud. I'm measuring around 45 to 50 decibels for the full system at stock after playing Starfield for over an hour. Of course, from there, you could also set up some custom fan curves to fit whatever your needs are. All right, last thing to install now is the GPU and I'll be using the RTX 4090 Founders Edition. This is one of the smaller 4090 cards that you can get, but they are quite hard to come by. This case can fit though a GPU up to 360 millimeters in length. And so that is plenty of room for much bigger third-party cards. You could also go the AMD route if you wanted to with a like 7900 XT or XTX. Those are some good high-end options as well and would have no problems fitting into the case. I actually have a build coming out in the next week or so with the 7900 XT. So if you're interested in seeing how that card performs, be sure to check it out. But this 4090 GPU is in a league of its own and absolutely dominates all other GPUs in performance. But it is quite expensive and it's probably way overkill for most people. I'm getting 70 to 80 frames per second in 4K playing Starfield at the highest settings without using FSR and 80 to 90 frames with it on at a render resolution of 75%. Now that's the more demanding areas. In like corridor spaces, I'm getting over 130 frames per second. 
This game also looks absolutely insane on an OLED ultra wide 3440 by 1440 monitor at over 100 frames per second here using the highest settings with FSR. Same thing with Ratchet and Clank at 140 frames per second in 4K with everything completely maxed out including ray tracing and DLSS3 using frame generation. Turning off all that AI upscaling and we're still looking at over 70 frames per second. But again, I think most people would want to utilize DLSS3 in this game. The high frame rate at well over 170 frames per second and the OLED colors on the ultra wide also looks really incredible as well. So let's lower the card into the case, slide it into the PCI Express slot and then secure it. Finally, let's plug in the 12 volt high power cable and you'll wanna make sure that it's completely pushed in. Last thing to do here is reinstall the side panels and that's the build complete. So yeah, I'm really happy with the way this build turned out. And I'm liking this Q300L V2 a lot actually. It's very straightforward to build in, has good airflow, and it's a pretty good deal at only $60. I should mention that it also has some rubber feet on the back so that you can lay it down on its side if that fits better in your space, which is pretty nice. I guess if there's one nitpick, I would like to see this and more cases have a removable top. That would make it so much easier to make those top connections. But again, for $60, it's hard to complain. So that's all for me today. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.